All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the OpenStack Summit here in Atlanta. We are kicking off the security track today by talking about the OpenStack Security Group. And if you don't know what that is, you'll find out in a couple minutes. If you do know what that is, wonderful thank you and welcome for coming. Um, I know this room was a little tricky to find. I know I was running around in circles for a few. So I suspect we'll have a few people trickling in over the next few minutes. But I think it makes sense to go ahead and get started. So first of all, what we're going to talk about today, um, I've got myself, Brian Payne, Rob Clark from HP, and um, Nathan Kinder from Red Hat all here to talk to you. So we'll be rotating a little bit. Hopefully, that will keep it a little more interesting and dynamic for you guys as well. Um, first, I'm going to kick off by telling you a little bit about what the OpenStack Security Group is, uh, who we are, what we've been doing. And uh, Rob will tell you about some of our plans for the upcoming release cycle. And uh, we'll get into some more depth about some of the things we're doing and what we're planning to do next on each of those specific topics. And then finally, we'll close by showing you all the wonderful ways that you can pitch in and help. Um, we're still sort of a new and growing organization within OpenStack. And uh, we'd really, really benefit from your help and involvement. So first of all, a little bit about who we are. Um, we are a ragtag, grassroots kind of group. Uh, we've come together to try to improve the security in OpenStack. We're working on documentation, deployment, um, guidance, steps for hardening OpenStack cloud deployments, um, and trying to also work with each of the core projects and even some of the fringe projects so that they can improve their security along the way. Um, we currently have about 150 members. Um, I count that by the number of people that have joined our Launchpad group. Uh, there's also maybe a subset of that who's really regularly active through our IRC meetings, through our mailing list, and through the various projects that we're working on. If you're interested in learning more, um, getting involved, and getting pointers to all the various things that we're doing, you can go to the URL that's at the bottom of this page. That's our Launchpad group. And from there, you can request to join. It's currently listed as a private group. But trust me, we will probably accept you if you, uh, if you say that you want to join. Some of the main things that we've been working on is documentation. So actually, this wasn't really expected. But when we first started work with the security group about two years ago now, uh, we, we kind of thought we'd just dive right in and start making the code better. But we realized there was a big gap in uh, documentation and letting people know what to do with the existing security features, how to deploy things securely in OpenStack. And so we actually started this journey by getting involved in writing a book on how to do all this stuff well, um, by working on OpenStack security notes, which is things that we'll talk a little bit more about later, um, and some other documentation efforts. We also do a lot of code review. Uh, for those that are developers, you can tag your commits with security impact. And that actually sends an email to the OpenStack security mailing list. And uh, with luck, we'll get in there and, and give you some security review on the code. I know we're not perfect with getting all those reviews in, but we do our best to, uh, to touch the ones where people request it. Uh, more recently, we've been actually going through the code at a slightly higher level, sort of at an architectural level, to do threat analysis and review. And uh, we've been finding some very interesting things there. And we're going to talk about that in more depth later in this presentation. And finally, occasionally the vulnerability management team will call in members from the OpenStack security group to help sort of triage bug reports that come in. So we can assess uh, whether or not something is severe enough to require an OpenStack security advisory or, uh, or a, you know, a code change, or if it's something that could be handled through documentation or just more information about the source code. So if you look back across the most recent six months, um, we've had a lot of improvements in how we're handling OpenStack security notes. And we'll talk more about that today. I mentioned the threat analysis project. We're going to be talking more about that. And we also uh, finally formalized ourselves a little bit by having leadership elections. Um, to give you a sense of our history, we sort of started this group, I said, about two years ago. And it was sort of led by Fiat because Rob and I sort of just declared ourselves leaders and started growing the group. Um, we finally decided as we grew a little bit bigger, it was important to have an actual elected leader. And I was also needing to step aside uh, to spend some time on some additional other tasks. And so we had a lead election. And uh, Rob here was actually elected to lead for the next cycle. And so congrats. Thank you. <laughs> um, 
So, so one of my first acts is um, sort of outgoing co-lead will be to speak a little less to you today and let Rob speak a little bit more. And so on that note, I have Rob coming in to talk to you about the plans coming forward. Thank you. So when we decided to look at how the OpenStack Security Group was going to be run and uh, the things we were going to try and achieve in the next six months, it turned out there were actually quite a, quite a lot of things that we wanted to do. Um, we end up with a large number of projects, and prioritizing them becomes quite important for us. Uh, they have various levels of impact, and some of which, some of them you're already well aware of. So our three key projects are three things that the OpenStack Security Group is going to be focusing on over the next uh, release is threat analysis, the OpenStack Security Guide, and the OpenStack Security Notes. These are three things that we're already delivering and already providing uh, value to OpenStack with. Uh, following on from that, there is uh, less of a focus, but something we'd like to deliver within this time frame are the developer security guidelines and the cryptographic review of OpenStack. It is very difficult right now for somebody to look at OpenStack and say, my business, my company, my government demands that I use the following cryptographic standards. Does OpenStack meet them? Well, yes, probably, no, probably. It's very difficult to just say, say quickly what is and isn't being used in different parts of OpenStack. Our stretch goals, and a couple of these are waiting for technology to catch up with us, are to do with automating some of the other things we've done. So where we have consistent findings from threat analysis, where we have uh, consistent vulnerabilities being identified through security advisories and security notes, it's looking at how we can codify some of those things and put them into the various bits of infrastructure we have so that we can start catching them while they're being commit committed. So threat analysis, security guide, security notes. These are the three main things we're focusing on. They uh, already provide value to OpenStack. The uh, book, the guide, is available in tree form. You can download it for free. Um, you can contribute to it by correcting some of the many mistakes. And uh, continue, you know, it's a great way to get into um, contributing to OpenStack security, actually, because the, the guide is very large. It was written in, written in a short period of time. And I think Brian's going to speak a little bit more about that. Um, our best practices are interesting opportunities to, to, uh, to improve OpenStack from a security point of view. Uh, they are started. Um, Nathan started some of the, the uh, cryptographic review stuff recently. Um, the developer security guidelines are already up on the wiki, but a lot of them are stubbed out. The idea with the uh, developer security guidelines is that um, what we have done, in fact, my talk after this is about a review of every uh, security advisory that has affected OpenStack in the last five releases. Um, We've taken a bunch of the things that happen a lot and, and put them into guidelines, and we'd like to get developers and PTLs to sign up to try and follow these things. Uh, the reason I call those out separately as a low bar for entry is that they don't necessarily require you to be um, a hands-on active technical contributor. So you don't need to be au fait with using Garrett and the, the whole Git process, which is quite a high bar to entry if all you want to do is add a few lines to something or contribute in a little way. The stretch goals, I don't really anticipate us hitting these in this cycle. Uh, there are interesting opportunities where we can and can do some basic things, like checking for bad functions and checking for known mistakes that we've seen happen in the past within OpenStack. Uh, one of the things we noticed uh, on the various reviews we did is actually developers are pretty good at putting in tests to make sure that they don't regress security issues. Um, so the stretch goals are really here to identify uh, where we want to take things in the future. So threat analysis, I'm going to speak a little bit about threat analysis in, in OpenStack, because it's something that hasn't really happened before, or at least it hasn't happened in public before. Um, you know, Rackspace, HP, Nebula, Red Hat, millions and millions of dollars worth of other big companies are all doing their individual threat analyses of OpenStack. They're all looking at individual services. They're all finding interesting bugs. And some of them are disclosing them, and some of them aren't. And they're all missing stuff. Every single one of us will have missed stuff in our threat analysis. Anyone who thinks they didn't did a bad threat analysis. Um, so one of the things I'd like to see moving forward is a bringing together of the different threat analysis efforts that are going on in the community, such that 
core projects can be reviewed in the open. There's already a process in place for doing some of this stuff. The guys that are working on this are working incredibly hard. And the idea is that we will be able to, uh, this is just proof that people have actually done work and drawn diagrams and stuff. Um, <laughs> the idea is that once everybody comes together and starts contributing to these reviews in public, uh, a number of things happen. Firstly, the individual amount of resource spent by each organization goes down. That's great. If I don't have to use three people on my threat analysis, if I can put two on it and have somebody doing something else that benefits OpenStack, like contributing to one of these other things, then that's a win for me, and it's a win for OpenStack if every other company does the same thing. Similarly, we'll bring together our combined knowledge. We'll get some better combined coverage. And then what I anticipate happening is that the various companies that are involved will then end up just doing spun out delta reviews for their little bits of secret source and, and their value adds. So um, at this point, I'm going to pass on to Nathan, who's going to talk to you about the uh, Security Notes project, which is something he's done amazing work on. OK, so how many people here are familiar with the Security Notes or have seen them? OK, good, fair amount of you. Um, so I'm going to give an overview of what security notes are, um, and then get into some process around it and where they're going. So security notes are not advisories. Um, basically, VMT is responsible for advisories, and advisories usually end up being something that has a real code fix. Here's this vulnerability. Here's what you need to install to fix it. Uh, security notes cover more things at the advice level or the documentation level. You need to be aware of these configuration settings. The default could be insecure, um, you know, or just pointing out important things you must be aware of from a security perspective in, in the code that you're running. So it's really intended to raise awareness of these issues that are out there that you may not be aware of. Um, you could think of it as a knowledge base, but only for security-related topics. And so here's some examples of notes that have been published uh, within the year, basically. And you can see it covers all sorts of things, things from Heartbleed, which isn't really an OpenStack-specific issue, but it does affect OpenStack, um, to actual you know, configuration issues within the projects, like uh, potential token revocation abuse, for example. And it'll give advice of, here's how you can configure around this issue. And, tell you, you know, how to inspect your deployment to actually see if you're vulnerable or not. So the notes are published to a few locations uh, right now. They're published to the mailing list, both the development lists and the regular users list. Um, and we also publish them on the OpenStack wiki to make it a little more consumable. If you missed things on the mailing list, then it's pretty easy to do, especially on the dev list, because the just sheer amount of traffic there. You can go to one location and see if anything new is there on the wiki. Um, and they're also listed within the weekly newsletter that, uh, that Stefano mails out. So there have been a lot of process changes since Havana. Um, basically, the way that security notes were written uh, and published in the past were that everything went through launchpad bugs. So we determined that a security note was needed for a particular issue. Someone would write up a draft, put it in as a bug comment. Maybe you get some review feedback there, and it goes back and forth. And then it would get sent out to the mailing list. No wiki at that point. Um, that's been formalized a lot more in order to try to bring the quality up. So instead of just using launchpad, we now actually are keeping security notes in Git and using Garrett Review, just like the development process uses. And we actually have guidelines in place for who must review a security note before it can go live. Um, so two of us here on the stage have to review every security note. And a PTL or a core member of any affected project uh, for the particular issue. Um, publishing, also, the, the wiki publishing is new. That wasn't there before. Um, so that uh, makes it a little more consumable, I think. Uh, and then we have unique identifiers for security notes, just more for convenience purposes to be able to refer to them. In the past, we just used launchpad bug numbers. Um, but we actually have some sort of unique identifier similar to how uh, the OSSAs, the security advisories, are. 
So the results of these changes that I've seen are that the output has increased considerably. Uh, during Havana, there were three OSSMs published. It was a new thing at the time. I think that Havana, right around when the Havana cycle was starting was when the first security note was actually published. Um, but there were three of them at that point. We had 10 published in the Ice House cycle, and we have some already in progress for Juno right now. Um, so the output is, is higher. Probably still should be higher than that. I think we could be documenting even more issues that are raised, um, but it's a good start. And the quality, I feel, has gone up as well. Um, the reviews have been a lot more in-depth, and there's a lot more back and forth and adjustment of it. And actually having the criteria for reviews for them to get published, uh, I think has really helped there. Um, and I mentioned the criteria that we've been following there. And so going forward, further ways to improve the security note process. Uh, we want to get them published into the OpenStack security guide, likely in an appendix. And we've been working with the doc team on that. Um, so I think ideally, if the security guide is released for every OpenStack release, say the Ice House security guide update, it would be great if only the security notes that actually affect Ice House are listed in there as an appendix and updated live throughout the cycle as new issues are found, as usually happens. Um, so that's a big goal, and I think that will make things even more consumable and raise even more awareness to the notes. Uh, adding automatic gate jobs to keep the quality up. So starting to tie into all of this great development infrastructure that's built around OpenStack, getting that into our process here as well for security notes. Right now, we don't have any particular jobs that do things like check for formatting, or they could potentially check for things better than just spell check and, and formatting changes. But we could actually you know, have some other checks in place potentially on that. Um, and Another great improvement, similar um, to reviewing security advisories, is reviewing security notes. Because a lot of times, what we're finding with the security notes are it may have been a you know, poor development decision in a default or you know, just a design of a particular feature and that is confusing and could have security ramifications. So reviewing those and starting to establish guidelines based off of what we've learned um, I think can really be beneficial. And as we start to get into some of the other efforts um, that were just discussed, we can really go through driving those security guidelines and best practices for developers based out of what we've learned here. And of course, one of the other future improvements I didn't list here is just trying to increase the output. Um, that requires getting more people involved, just in reviewing, in pointing out issues that should be documented, uh, in writing notes. You don't need to be able to write code. You can simply know of issues and maybe something bugs you from a security standpoint of this is really confusing and we should write it up. Contribute it. Uh, absolutely, I think that's what we need to get more people on board with to, to really raise the, the cadence of the notes. And so that's what I wanted to cover security notes. And Brian was going to talk about the security guide. All right, so how many people here are familiar with the OpenStack Security Guide? Quite a few hands. That's actually fantastic. Uh, so this is basically what we call the book um, in the sense that it's actually a book that you can buy uh, in published bound form. You can also go to the website that's on the bottom of this slide, and you can view the book in HTML. Uh, you can download a PDF version of it. And, and those online versions are continuously up to date. So every time we edit a single word in the book, we publish a new online version. So you're always getting the latest and greatest. The book was actually created through an interesting process called a book sprint. Uh, basically, this meant that last summer, we took about 10 to 15 people that were involved in OpenStack security and um, somehow convinced them to come to a hotel in Annapolis, Maryland, and we locked ourselves in a room for a week. And um, it was all in good nature. But literally on Monday, 
we were putting post-its on the wall, trying to figure out what the table of contents should look like. And by Friday, we were doing final edits on all of the chapters that we had written. So this whole book was written in one week. And that alone, I think, was just an amazing effort. It was a really great way to, to spearhead something like this. Um, the end result uh, is, is relatively comprehensive, but what we did at the end is we sort of stepped back and we realized we had spent all this time talking about um, a lot of what we called the glue, these, these extraneous configuration pieces, things like TLS, things like the database, things like the message queue, all these things that you need to deploy OpenStack that aren't actually OpenStack themselves. Um, but we do have chapters in there on the various OpenStack projects as well, at least the ones where we had experts in the room. So we had chapters uh, talking about configuration details for some of the main projects as well. Um, but so much of the security for deploying an OpenStack deployment is around the glue and how you deploy this thing. And so now what we want to do is we want to maintain this and we want to make sure that it's always up to date, that um, as changes happen in OpenStack or as changes happen with these side projects that are required for deploying a cloud, that the guide always represents the best thing to do. And so going forward, um, what we did is we actually converted the, um, the source code for the book into a doc book format. If, those are, if anyone here is familiar with that, it's basically an XML-based format, um, but it's not quite as bad as it sounds. Uh, that, that allows you to have a structured text um, around how the book is deployed. That way we can do reviews in Garrett. Um, we can templatize it. We can do all sorts of fun things for deploying it. And so now um, that we're a little shy of a year into having this out there, um, we're really starting to ramp up the efforts to do um, a full-scale editing of the book. We want to get a common voice since it was originally authored by 10 people. If you read through it from top to bottom today, you'll see a few little changes in voice throughout and things like this. So we just want to smooth it up, have it all sound a little more professional, update all the content, make sure it's, it's uh, current with, uh, with Ice House as all that work is happening as well. And so that's work that I'll be working on. And um, part of my reason here telling you about it today is this is actually a great task for folks to get involved with. Um, if you're interested in getting involved in security and OpenStack, um, you can learn a lot by doing it. And you can also contribute a lot by, by having this book out there. Um, a lot of people are reading it. I frequently hear back from people that it's something that people find useful. And uh, so I think maintaining this and keeping it as a valuable resource for the community is a, is a great idea. So a common theme throughout our various uh, speaking points today has been about how to get involved in OpenStack security. So um, how many people in the room are involved in running a OpenStack cloud of some size or description? Brilliant. OK. How many of you are worried about the security of that? OK. A lot of people getting sleepless nights. Brilliant. There are a lot of ways that you can contribute to uh, OpenStack security in, in the same way that you know, we've just gone through a bunch of ways that you consume the security contributions that other people have made. Um, so how, how many people in the room from your respective organizations have security teams dedicated to working on OpenStack? Brilliant. Keep your hands up. How many of you have those security guys making contributions to the open security efforts that are going on in OpenStack right now? OK. That's pretty cool. There's a lot of people in here right now that are, are um, worried about security, but for whatever reason aren't in a position to be able to contribute yet. And that's fine. Um, we, can, we, can work on, we can work on more projects like the ones we've spoken about uh, to, to bring people in. Um, so we have, as I say, we have these three key projects that we're, we're pushing forward on, which are the threat analysis, the security guide, and the OpenStack security notes. And you will see great improvements in all three of those. Any of those of you that a moment ago indicated you had security teams working towards OpenStack, I would really strongly en encourage you, if you're, some of you are in the room are from those teams or if you know the people in those teams, get them to start talking to us about the threat analysis. Because I guarantee we will have found things that you haven't and we will have missed things that you have caught. And I'd quite like it if there wasn't a massive breach of OpenStack on, on the front of TechCrunch and stuff, because that would be bad. Um, so there are a whole bunch of ways to participate. Uh, we have IRC meetings every Thursday at 1800 UTC. That's right. I often start the meetings at 5 or 7, but it's at 6. Um, 
we do code reviews, as, as Brian's already called out. You know, there are a lot of interesting opportunities for people to get involved. And uh, one of the things I wanted to do is just have a little bit of a, a question and answer session because we've got you know the three of us up here. Myself and Brian have uh, somewhat steered the OpenStack group for the, the last year and a half. Uh, and Nathan has come in and been doing some amazing work with the security notes. And this is just a good opportunity for any of you guys, if you have any questions or if there's anything you want to discuss. I know this is a, a, certainly, a, for me, a lot less technical than the talks I normally give at the summit. Um, there's graphs in the next one, I promise. So <laughs> if, if anyone's got any questions, now's an opportunity to, to talk to us. Or any comments on the threat analysis or how you can get involved in OpenStack, now's a good opportunity to, to talk about it. Yeah, Sorry, please, we, please do come up to a mic, because yeah. the acoustics in this room are horrendous, as you might have noticed already. Hey, so um, I think on the first slide you had governance, and you talked a little about configuration management and compliance. Is there any effort to actually define a hardening guide for OpenStack KVM combined? Because there's, you know, there's specific hardening templates like Dissistics or other hardening CIS has benchmarks for specific operating systems, but there isn't one that is, you know, for the full stack. So the OpenStack security guide, the the book that I mentioned earlier, um, some of the folks that were involved in that were actually talking about later taking the guide as it evolves and turning it into an OpenStack stick, for example. Right, so it already has some of that flavor. It's not as formalized, um, but I think that that's something that could certainly happen if the right people cared and, and wanted to, to help push it forward. But even without that formalism, um, that, that nature of guidance exists in there. Um, all the way through to the very last chapter is actually on compliance itself. Um, I have a more general question. Um, you discussed that several either corporate entities or private entities, whether it be HP, Dell, whatever, um, are performing security evaluations on OpenStack and, or either core features of OpenStack, plants, with whatever. Um, the results from those be, are, are varied and disclosed or not disclosed, right? But um, if I was kind of asking, do you know of any more, if they have been published, uh, generally, is that information typically included in your notes, or, or kind of where would an individual kind of get information on specific security evaluations that have been done on individual components? That's a very good question. Uh, to date, the only avenue that has been open to uh, to organizations like like one of ours, where they find something on a security review, is just to open open a bug with a VMT, which becomes a private bug until it is dealt with, and then eventually it's released as an OpenStack security advisory. Or they decide, well, that's that's kind of bad, but we, either we can live with it, or it's more of a configuration issue, or something we're not going to fix, and then it becomes a security note. There, at the moment, there's no nice... Uh, parallel process where people can contribute things from threat analyses and say, these are the things we found and these are how we found them. And that's really, that's the next step. That's where we need to be. So the direct answer to your question is no, but that's where we want to get to. However, there is, I mean, the, the threat analysis work that we mentioned, um, while it's not being published through the OpenStack security notes or the guide yet because it's somewhat immature, um, there are public Git repositories that have the output of some of those efforts. So they started with Keystone, and there's already a fair bit of information available on their Keystone review. Um, so I don't have the URL handy, but, um, but it's been mentioned in IRC meetings, so there's logs of it. And uh, if you came to one of us after, afterwards or later this week, we could certainly point you in the right direction to find some of that information. But you can stay for my talk, which, which discuss this stuff a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, so as Brian said, the threat analysis stuff that's going on in public is reasonably well documented and accessible. But things coming in from other organizations that aren't really plugged into this threat analysis process that we're bootstrapping at the moment, um, they just the only real avenue they have is to go through the bug process at the moment. And I'll save my threat analysis question for the threat analysis topics. <laughs> Are there any other questions? 
It's a pretty big group. There's got to be some questions. All right, we got one coming back here. So I wanted to find out about how your work intersect with uh, other developing standards in this area, like Cloud Security Alliance, FedRAMP, and IST, or ISO, uh, Cloud Security Initiatives. You guys want to take that? So was this? Um, <laughs> so the question was around which which various standards, like the Cloud Security Alliance, Star, all that stuff. Um, was, it, was it pertaining to the book or to the work that we're doing in general and whether or not we're aligned with those? So, uh, with the work that you guys are doing. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say that much of it is directly aligned with any one standard because you just rattled off five that you could think of during the time we were talking and it's difficult to keep all those different people happy at the same time. <laughs> but what we can do, or what we do say, is that um, you know, in the book we call out things, things that are relevant. Um, the CSA have produced various matrix that kind of show you all the different controls you need to apply. Um, so whether or not we would choose to, I mean, we could, we could look at putting those into the guidelines. The thing is, most of these, like ISO and all the others, they, they're generally covering a lot of the same things anyway. Um, and if we pick one, we'll end up upsetting a bunch of other people. So it's actually not something that, it's not something I'm 100% swayed on either way. I don't know what you guys think. I wouldn't want to pick one particular hmm. you know, um, standard. And everyone's going to have different requirements for which one they're going to want to follow. So yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the things I like about the security group, because we've got people from so many different organizations. I mean, it was initially bootstrapped, bootstrapped by, by myself and Brian. At the time, I was very much focused on public cloud. Uh, and Brian from Nebula, obviously very much focused on, on the private side of things. Now, as time's gone on, both of our scopes have, have changed slightly. but. Um, it gave us a good, good opportunity to provide these two very different perspectives on what security meant inside of OpenStack. And if you go back two years ago and ask us which standards we needed to meet, they would have probably been very different. And now, perhaps, there's a little bit more convergence. So things like the security guidelines, what I would say is that if you pick your chosen uh, compliance targets that you have to hit and go and have a look at things like our guidelines, I would be confident that 99% of them would be met already. And where they are, we'd really value a contribution to improve the security guidelines. I mean, the other thing that's worth mentioning is that, in my view, when you think about security of a system like OpenStack, compliance is one slice of that picture. But there's another slice that's all about just general hardening, right? How do you make this thing harder to hack into? And um, I would argue on the compliance side, there's actually a fair bit of organization out there through groups like CSA and such like that. And so we have largely, like through our book, tried to reference those things and talk about how they apply to OpenStack. But I would say a, a, a big bulk of the effort that's gone on by the security group is really on the hardening, which kind of becomes the foundation that you need for any compliance effort, um, just to generally make your cloud better and stronger. I noticed you talked a lot about stuff kind of maybe more after the fact rather than maybe uh, up front and trying to get the architectures and stuff right. I know Nathan <laughs> had just posted on, on Kite. How much is the security group actually involved in, in that sort of helping other developers make sure that they're getting those initial architectures right? I, I think it's an area that we're trying to get more overlap between developers and the security group. So it doesn't fall into one of those three main efforts that, that Robert pointed out. But the code reviews and security reviews, so every time a, a patch goes through, if a developer remembers to check you know, security impact and set the keyword, um, then it goes to our list. Now, having actual process of how many of those get reviewed and having official sign-offs from the security group, that's not all really in place. But I think there is a lot of kind of you know, behind the scenes reviewing going on there. Um, I know we've been reviewing some, there were some blueprints a couple weeks ago yep. around Nova, where, so, but we have to be asked at this point of, hey, can you look at this and tell me if there's anything you guys think should be done differently? So a good example of where we've been doing stuff like that is, is with Barbican, um, because it's very easy for a security team to come in, any security team in any organization to just walk into a room annoy a whole bunch of developers and then get ignored for the, for the rest of the time, right? So 
Barbican's a nice enough, small enough project, and it's easy enough for security people to get their heads around because it's, it's you know, key management. Um, that we can start, and we, we do sort of review a lot more of their blueprints and do a lot of those things. So we ramp up in that way. Also, threat analysis doesn't necessarily have to be retrospective. So at the moment, it pretty much is because there's so much, uh, so much code already out there. But the idea is that once you build up a certain cadence of review, um, you can start reviewing deltas, and those deltas can be on review, uh, can be on um, proposed changes rather than necessarily looking at code that's already out there. Um, it's definitely something we need to work on a lot more. You're absolutely right. It wasn't highlighted in those slides, but it's something I, I know we're all, all concerned about, how we can best influence and, and steer OpenStack to make smart choices. Um, the talk I have coming up after this really focuses on uh, pla places where people made bad choices in OpenStack. And um, in, a lot of these, in a lot of these situations, it wouldn't have taken much. If the right person had been in the room at the right time, you know, thing, things could have been steered differently. So I think it's definitely something we need to focus on more. It wasn't called out as much in the slide deck as, as it should have been, perhaps. Um, and it's something that I'm quietly confident that if we carry on doing what we're doing and bring more people in and start focusing on bigger and bigger projects, then we will hopefully get to that point where we have the level of influence that we want. I, the other thing to remember is if you look at the history and the timeline, um, all the core projects that you know and love, right? Nova, Keystone, Horizon, Swift, Glance, Sender, um, these were in existence before the security group was in existence. So it was hard for us to really influence the initial architecture for sure. Um, of course, things are constantly evolving. And uh, as we sort of get more integrated with the OpenStack community at large, one of our big goals will be to, to be more integrated with not just a code review step, but an architecture review step at the blueprint stage. And one of the, the early things that we've done there, the Nova team has started to formalize their blueprint process through a blueprint template and all that. And now there is um, a section in their template for security impact, just like you'd see in an RFC or something like that. And you know, it sounds minor, but it's an important step because just by putting that in, over the past month or so, we've already had several people ping us for, hey, can you look at the architecture that I'm proposing here? And that's really a great step forward for us trying to make uh, improvements before, the, before there are problems. I guess I'll follow that up in that. How has been the response from the developers when you've come and approached them? Um, and maybe that's always a challenge, um, being kind of in a security uh, position. It's, it is a challenge. And I think that's one of the reasons that we didn't come in two years ago and have an iron fist and say, hey, developers, security is the only thing that matters. You have to listen to us, right? We've, we've been very careful to be um, sort of nuanced with how we integrate with projects. I feel like we've generally been well received, um, and we've been coming in slowly. Um, so you know, we'll just have to see how it progresses with time. But the, the projects that we work with, um, we even have people that come to us to ask security questions. Um, they'll ping us on the mailing list, or they'll ask us on the side. Um, I feel like we have a pretty good relationship. It's just that there doesn't exist a formalism today that says you can't release Ice House before it's approved by security, right? I mean, we're, we're so far from that. But um, they're starting to realize that we're here, that we're a useful resource, and I think that will only benefit everyone in the long run. Well, thank you, everyone. I think that's about all we have time for today. We can take some more questions on the side if you'd like, but um, really appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Thank you.